A very, very good evening. A warm welcome to Two Full Tossers and apologies on two fronts. First of all, uh, we are ever so slightly late. I have just been uh, on another call with the British and Irish Lions who would not let me go because they were so excited that I was going to be speaking to our special guest tonight who will be introduced in just a moment. They wanted me to try and arrange selfies and send numbers, etc., which of course we can't because our guest is far too famous. And that also explains why I'm woefully underdressed and I can see the look of derision on Alan Committee's face. And it is a look that is entirely justified. Uh, so I extend a third apology to Alan for letting him down so publicly and so professionally. But nonetheless, say a very good evening to my very favorite analyst of the game of cricket. How are you, Mr. Committee? Oh, very well, thank you, sir. Lovely to see your your beautiful face. I hope it went well with the the, the British and Irish Lions. No doubt you gave them a little uh, insight into what to expect over the coming weeks, and hopefully none of that includes the COVID that our players seem to fall. Uh, so many new players have got. But uh, was it exciting? Was it delightful? Was it informative? Well, there were three players. One of them was Welsh, and one of them was Scots. So I didn't understand a uh, word I didn't say, no. but they seemed lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely terrific, and uh, we uh, we shared. Well, I had a glass or two of Boschendal. They did not. Uh, they're very professional, uh, but yes, they were uh, they were lovely. And we spoke about rugby, uh, which is now out the way because we can speak about cricket. And dare I say it, but we are heading towards a cricket World Cup, albeit of a T Twenty nature, Allen Committee, where we have just defeated the reigning world champions on their own turf. Are we almost ready to start to possibly begin to think that we can hope to dare to believe? I think that is a strong possibility of almost being half true. Uh, certainly, we are closer, if uh, uh, not almost ready, to begin rebuilding this new site. Uh, it was an unexpected result, if you and I are honest. We did not see the T20s going our way. Uh, but they did in the closest of margins. And well done, that team. But really well done, uh, Shamsi and de Kock. Uh, just a tremendous double act. Uh, Shamsi and de Kock is actually the name of a publishing house uh, in North India. But uh, well done, those players. And uh, fantastic viewing, you've got to say it, even with Mike Hazeman's occasional slightly drunk commentary. Is the man drinking a bit? He did seem to be all over the place. Not often on the cricket ground, but good luck to him. I'm a big fan. Uh, lovely to watch. He is Australian and he has an admirable command of the English there, language therein. So we will give him uh, a little <laughs> extra rope than we would others. Uh, well, look, we are super excited. We've got a world-class guest on this evening. I will say right at the moment, with apologies to Quinton de Kock and Tabrez Shamsi and Aidan Markram and Khagi Sorabada, comfortably... South Africa's best cricketer at the moment. Yeah. Comfortably. Yeah. Comfortably. 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 But before we let you know who that guest is and have a look at one or two other items of cricketing note, it is always very special to find out who our lost legend is this week. You'll tell us a little later on the show, but give us a clue. Show us a picture this week's lost legend, Island Committee. Now, there's a couple of new things going to happen this week, and here's your first one. Uh, this is a lost legend, and I don't know if you recognize him, Dan. I don't know that you will. He's I not don't. actually a cricketer. He is one of our lost legend cricket commentators from the 80s. I wonder if you know who he is. And uh, Why don't you type in with your grubby little fingers, dirty fingernails and all, into the chat box if you know who that person is. It's no Lee Bond, but he is a magnificent cricket commentator and actually a bit of a South African celeb from the mid-80s and even perhaps early 70s. And I'm talking the 1800s. So let's find out a little later who that lost legend might be. Do you have an idea, by the way? I, I don't, but if we bring that photo back for a moment, if we can just show that again. He looks like he just walked out <laughs> his front door and walked into Derek Watts with a camera crew. <laughs> he does look a little shocked, which, to be <laughs> fair, gives you an indication of the kind of commentary stuff. He was always a little shocked that he was, A, at the cricket ground, and B, that things were happening, because often the events on the cricket field would interrupt his commentary. Um, a bit of a Charles Fortune, and by the way, no Charles Fortune, but then no Lee Barnard. Who he is, we will discover in moments. All right. Get your answers in. If you have a clue, I do not. I have no clue at all. But that's, of course, it was the mid-1980s. I wasn't born yet, so Correct. I obviously would not know uh we've so we've had that uh, we've had that cricket going on there's also now simmering on the horizon and it links to our guest this evening a competition called the hundred do you a have any idea how it works b have no. any interest in watching uh, or c both of the above 
Well, D, uh, partly both of the above. And I'll tell you for why, because I don't know what the game's about. It makes no sense. They've come up with all new terms. Uh, but we have got some South African superstars playing out there. And so we will always give them the benefit of the doubt. Find out which teams they play and how many are in each team. I'm hoping all the South Africans will make up one team. Then it's easy enough to just watch one team play occasionally in the hundred. But if they spread out, I'll give them a chance. I'll give them six hours of my time um, spread out over the next two years. And let's see what they come up with. I'm excited. Mildly. Of course, there is that team that the South Africans all play for anyway. It's called New Zealand. Uh, I'm not sure if they're playing in the 100, uh, but we shall inquire perhaps of our guest uh, this evening, uh, which I am looking forward to. Uh, and then I'm also, there, I think there was some other cricket. Uh, now, look, uh, now, listen to me. Now, here's the problem. All cricket games, essentially all sport, comes down to the story. What is the story? The underdog against the big guys, the finalists, the person who didn't think they'd make it, the team. Every great team, anything that makes you want to watch it has a great story, which is why none of us could really get any interest whatsoever in Sri Lanka versus England one day in nationals because it's a good side that no one likes versus a bad side that no one cares about whether they're doing well or not. And quite honestly, I literally would click onto that channel and somehow my remote would just click off and take me to to wrestling to but anything else anything else I, I just i know one of the teams what it has to have been england because they're the better side i assume they won everything in a very boring manner yeah, with i think no the third, the third game was rained off after uh, one of their two zimbabweans took four wickets <laughs> for them uh, <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, that was a very dull affair and i'm glad it's over if it is over or if it's still on hopefully it finishes sooner we have uh, other distractions, including amongst them the 100. We're going to get to that in just a moment and try and find out how on earth it works. Uh, we do have our lost legend. We have a suggestion uh, from Gary van Lochenberg, our oh. trusted former bull and scrum half, uh, right. who uh, is, is either a very dedicated fan or has no television but lots of data. Uh, and his comment is, he's no Trevor Quirk. Um, he is no Trevor Quirk, but he was in that era. Uh, but let's should we go to it? Shall we go and find let's, out? Let's, our let's, let's find out. Who is this week's Alan's Lost Legend? Now, there he is. Look at that face. A face not even his mother could love. Uh, he's no Lee Barnard. He's certainly no Trevor Quirk. But as I suggested earlier, he was in the same era uh, and would have appeared in the commentary box next to Mr. Quirk's because, in fact, he was our famous... Afrikaans commentator, but to be fair, in the early 80s, he would have shared because Afrikaans and English commentary were in the same box. Yes, those were dangerous and unprecedented times. And this is the magnificent figure that is Edwell van Arde. And it's a little clue to our guest later today. I thought that's what... There he is, also the host of Flunk Dunk. Early SABC commentator, says Monty W. Stevenson, quite right. And host of this magnificent quiz show, a forerunner, I think, to... Who wants to be a millionaire? Except, of course, it was flink dunk to think flink. And this man, Edwell van Arde, who, by the way, wasn't necessarily from Earth. No matter what his surname suggests, you can see it, that alien-looking face, slightly triangular. In fact, the forerunner of E.T., the extraterrestrial. This man would sit in the Afrikaans commentary box with his dulcet Afrikaans tones and wax lyrical about anything and everything that wasn't cricket and then would lose, uh, often a hat-trick would occur, or a double hundred, and he'd be completely shocked and surprised, even more than our president. He would be shocked and surprised by the events that had occurred through the window in front of him, but was a huge fan, and a little bit, may I suggest, of a lost legend. Our shout-out tonight goes to Edwell von Arde. And congratulations to Monty W. Stevenson. Who's Very good. Well, he picked that up. Well done, Monty. Edwell Van Arder, early SABC commentator. There we go. A great, great lost legend. Uh, somebody who I don't think ever had the opportunity, sadly for him, to commentate on our guest today because our <laughs> guest uh, preceded uh, Mr. Uh, Van Arder by uh, uh, about two decades. Um, and uh, he is uh, the lesser for it because to commentate 
on uh, not just a great player, but on possibly the single greatest cover drive the game of cricket has ever seen. It That's is right. majestic. It's it's a cover drive that deserves its own Instagram page if there isn't one already. In fact, there are probably several, and if not, we shall start one before the end of today. Uh, by now, you've almost certainly worked out who our guest is. Uh, she's currently at a seven-star resort in Croatia pretending to quarantine, judging by the photos on her Instagram account, not her cover drives one, where she is preparing to take on the 100. Uh, she is a musician. She could have been a doctor. I think she's got an architecture degree, an engineering degree, and uh, can uh, build a Formula One car in under eight minutes. There's nothing she can't do, especially a cover drive. It is Laura Volvard. Laura, good evening. Welcome to Two Full Hi. Thank hey. you so much for having me. <laughs> oh. Hello. So uh, from Van Aarde to Wolf Art, you see, you still got the earth. There is that earthiness well, that I've tried to keep far, in there. But <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, I'm trying my best. <laughs> Tell me, when, when you saw that photo, Laura, a very, very warm welcome to the show, did you have any idea who it was? No clue. Sorry. No, <laughs> no, no idea. It was Van Aarde, even if you looked at that now. No. No, nothing. <laughs> I question this when you when you talk to players. We won't talk about the current commentators because you've got to be nice about them because they call the game. <laughs> when you were growing up and watching cricket, like I remember listening to Tony Cozier on the BBC, yeah. loving hearing him commentate. Uh, as well, yeah, everybody watched Richie Benno. Uh, who, who was your top commentator, Laura? Oh, I don't really know. I would. I just watch the cricket. <laughs> I don't really focus that much on the commentators. To be off. That's, uh, that's a good man. I love your life, Bob. <laughs> 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 uh, right at this moment, Mike Hazeman is sitting crying watching the show <laughs> we're in the West Indies. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the show. It's lovely to have you on. Judging um, by uh, Instagram uh, to be uh, either training for the 100 or training for various swimming disciplines at the Tokyo <laughs> Olympics. Uh, a swimming pool in Dubrovnik. Is that where you're calling home for a little while? Yes, um, so we're in Dubrovnik for two weeks. Um, the first week, though, is pretty much self-isolation. Self um, so we're just hanging around the hotel rooms, and then next week we'll be able to explore a little bit. So um, we're on, like, day five now, so almost there. But probably not a country you ever thought you'd be touring because of cricket. No, definitely not. We were actually talking about it the other day. We catch balls and hit balls for a living, and now we're sitting in Croatia. It's actually crazy. <laughs> have you and this is the litmus test of how globally famous you are has anybody in croatia stopped you to ask for a selfie yet <laughs> no <laughs> definitely not <laughs> i don't think they know what cricket is <laughs> <laughs> oh Dave, you, have you been to croatia island committee on one of your I world have, i've heard only lovely things apparently it's a very beautiful country and no doubt you'll be able to tell us more about that in week two when you can get out of your hotel room it looks a fairly nice hotel room. Is it all right if they put you up yeah, in it's decent? Not bad. It's, yeah, it's really, really nice. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure we'll be able to explore a bit, but it's it's awesome. Good. Is, is the uh, is the corridor carpet taking much turn? Is it bouncy? What sort of track have they got laid down for you? Um, I think Copy's getting a bit of swing. She always does. Um, so there's a bit in it for the seamers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so so this uh, the excitement uh, building up towards the 100. I know we've been slightly disparaging, only because we don't understand all the rules. No doubt you do, and you're going to have to <laughs> um, this much. But uh, what's, what's the level of excitement? You guys starting to, to look forward to, to what lies ahead? Yeah, super excited. Um, I think the first games are like 21 August. I think I play my first game 23 August. Um, so it's still a, a while away, but super excited to get there and to start training and to learn exactly how the format works because I'm still 100% sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no, no. But yeah, really excited. I've, I've been looking, Alan, I got that piece that you sent me in terms of innovation uh, for the 100. You're now allowed three serves instead of two. Uh, one, <laughs> one, the same person has to take all of the throw-ins. Uh, yes. you, you get a scrum penalty if you're caught behind. Um, and then there's a three-point line if you win the freestyle uh, during the first chucker. I think that's, that's about it. That's, that's, that's exactly right. happens. And that's all in the interval, uh, which happens at the end. <laughs> so that's all very, very exciting. 
<laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about your team. Where are you playing? Who are you playing with? Um, I'm playing for the Northern Superchargers. Uh, we're the purple team. Um, I think everything in the outfit is purple. The hat, the pads, the the t-shirts. So that'll be quite fun. Um, we're based in Yorkshire, I think, in Leeds. Oh, um, right. Yeah, so I haven't been there, but um, I hope it's cool. Um, and I think Faf's playing for the, the the male version of my team, so hopefully I can see him a bit and chat about cricket a little. Um, so that'll be cool. That's very cool. Just well, yeah, he'll, he'll probably try and borrow your trousers. Just be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hide them. <laughs> That'd be nice though, because you go into the nets and just help him with his cover drive. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but it will be cool though because all of our games are double headers uh, with theirs. So we'll play in the afternoon and then they play at night. So we should see them around quite a bit, which will be which will be fun. Brilliant. And uh, and who else in your team uh, from around the world? Any any players that you've been playing against that you're looking forward to sharing your team with? Um, Jamima Rodriguez from India. Uh, she's like. A really short little goal that bats number four for them. Um, and then another goal from Australia, Laura Harris. Um, I've played with her before at the Big Bash. So, so at least well, I know one person. So that'll be <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it sounds super exciting. And I love the fact that they're giving as much PR and excitement and energy to the women's team as the men's. Your career, I mean, you seem to be been around forever, uh, but that's only because you started playing South Africa <laughs> and you were nine. Uh, but in the space of the career that you've had so far how dramatically how radically have you seen women's cricket change from where it was to where it is now well yeah it's it's been incredible i mean there's all these new leagues popping up out of nowhere and um it's really good the the quality of cricket is really amazing in the league so for us to go over there and learn and play it's it's such good experience for us as players um and yeah just to see how far the game in the world has come in the past five years is incredible um I don't know if it's just because I'm in women's cricket that I feel like it's growing so much because I'm always following the right pages on Twitter and watching the right, you know, that type of thing. Um, but I, I guess we are playing more on TV now, so I really hope that everyone else can see it growing as well. Oh, 100%. I'm sure that that is happening. Well, it definitely is happening. Uh, tell me a little bit about, I mean, this has been a strange year for everyone in terms of the amount of games and things being reshuffled and all that. What's your, how are we feeling about you know, you, you've not been playing for a couple of weeks, if not months now, uh, going into a big competition. How do you prepare for something like that? It's obviously not ideal. Um, our last game was in India. Um, I think it was early April. So it's been a while with no games. Um, and I'm kind of a person who likes to play a lot of cricket before I feel good about myself. Um, but yeah, I've, I've spent a lot of time in the nets and I know it's not the same, but I guess you just try as hard as you can to kind of mimic what you're going to get in the game. Um, but hopefully I can use the the couple of days before the tournament to, to bat on some turf wickets there and maybe have a middle session or two to, to really get the feel. We know you as the star batter. We haven't seen quite so much of the bowling, and I, I'd like this to change. <laughs> I feel there is a star all-rounder waiting yeah. to block. I don't think so. I'm tall, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't turn your arm over in the nets occasionally? Oh, mm. A little bit of off spin if anyone's working on it, but nothing more than that. <laughs> well, look, Graham Smith bowled international off spin, so really anybody can. I mean, I, really? I, I, I think, did he not, Alan, correct me if I'm wrong here, did he yes. not want, he hit yes. the square with umpire <laughs> on the side of the head. <gasps> And that was better deliveries. One of the sixes that were hit off him hasn't landed yet. Is still traveling <laughs> southern suburbs of Cape Town. Um, uh, unbelievable. If he can do it, so can you. If you had to describe your your, your batting style, g give us a, a cricketer that we might know that you'd say, oh, that's someone I'd like to be. That's the kind of attitude I have or the kind of um, style that I think that I have as a batsman. Better. Um, well... In the women's game, I think Meg Lanning is kind of someone I aspire to bat like. Um, she's kind of broken all the records so far, and yeah. she's just always scoring runs. So if I can bat anything close to, to how she bats, I think that'll be pretty cool. Oh, cool. when she finds out about that, she's going to be delighted. Yeah, don't don't kill her, please. <laughs> Thanks. Because <laughs> she's still playing, so it's awkward. 
I say, was it uh, was it Virat Kohli who stopped you for a selfie once, famously? Yeah, that's totally what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did you still get a little starstruck in the cricket world? I mean, you've been around, even though you're still so young, you've been playing for such a long time. Are there still players you, oh my goodness, I can't believe that is. Does that still happen? Yeah, definitely. Um, especially Virat, because I love him. Um, but yeah, um, it definitely happens a lot, even in the women's game as well. Some of the players are like legends. Like um, when I played for the Adelaide Strikers, Charlotte Edwards was my coach there. Um, and she's like a legend of the women's game. So for the whole tournament, I was just starstruck. And she was like giving me underarms in the nets. And it was just surreal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you need to qualify with legend of the women's game. She's just a legend of cricket. She is an yeah. absolute force of nature. Uh, a status that you are fast acquiring. Uh, you've got the 100 coming up. Uh, beyond that, uh, the South African women's team, there's a, a squad of like 20 world-class players South Africa now lays claim to. Uh, next uh, next World Cup's on the horizon. Do you feel we're in a position to do something really strange for South Africa and bring home a cricket World Cup? <laughs> yeah that would be strange wouldn't it um but yeah very <laughs> very excited um i think the group of players we have at the moment um you know it's a very talented group and we came so close at the last world cup and the, the 50 over world cup before as well so we're really excited to to get past that semi-final barrier this time and i do think we have the right group at the moment i think a lot of players are, are reaching their their peak ages almost in cricket so it'll be awesome to see what happens who will be the team to beat? Um, well, other than us, probably Australia. <laughs> Good answer! Good answer! <laughs> <laughs> you get 106 points for that answer. <laughs> it's 82 points more than anybody has ever got for an answer on this show. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, well, these these completely strange times. You've got uh, bubbles and lockdowns and quarantines uh, currently in Croatia, as we know. If you had to be stuck in a bubble with one of your teammates, who'd be the best person to be stuck with, and who'd be the worst? Um, the best maybe Lizelle in my team. I think we get along quite well and. She's really relaxed and really chilled. She just stays in her room most of the day and sleeps. So I think she would just be chilled. <laughs> so I wouldn't mind quarantining with her. Um, and the worst, I don't know who to say. Um, I'm just going to say Mignon because I know she wouldn't be mad at me. But she, she talks a lot sometimes. So <laughs> maybe Mignon. <laughs> I don't see. I see she's just logged on. There we go. There's Minion. Lovely to have you. Oh. Uh, uh, um, what about uh, what about the life ahead in in Yorkshire? Do you have much of an idea, uh, kind of what lies in ahead? Are you in a hotel for the duration? Have you got a, a house with some of your teammates? How's that going to work? Um, as far as I know, we're in a hotel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm assuming the other internationals will be around there as well. So. Hopefully I won't be all alone for, for the whole time. But, yeah, I, I saw on the schedule we're traveling quite a bit, though, because the games are all over. So so we'll probably be with the team most of the time. I, I, I'm getting about you, Anna. I'm getting seriously excited all of a sudden. Um, not yeah. so much for the cricket, but just uh, it's happening and I'm excited for you. It's, it's just such a yeah, cool thank you experience that's uh, that's coming ahead. And uh, the cricket itself is going to be terrific. But I guess it's going to be an awesome life experience as well. Exactly. Um, and starting out with being in Croatia isn't too bad either. So it's been no. awesome so far. <laughs> you arrive in England town as they're opening everything up and things feel a little bit more normal as we go into, uh, yeah. I think, the eighth month of uh, lockdown. Apparently, we're going up six levels. We're going to level uh, 11 now. Uh, and I don't know if that's true. <laughs> but, uh, so, so at least you'll be providing the entertainment that we'll so desperately need. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Um, we uh, we have a tradition on this show, Laura, and we've had to go extra hard here because I know uh, that you got an average of 117% in matric, um, <laughs> uh, age 12 when you finished high school. And so we've had to get some really tough questions. Uh, we have uh, the two full tosses quiz. It is five questions. Okay. Some people have done very well. Uh, Darren Goff got four out of five. Very good. Uh, 
Some people have been appalling. I think Scott Styrus got one out of five. JP Dermany got one out of five. Um, so okay. they were both fairly dreadful. Um, so uh, are you ready uh, to take on a particularly nasty edition of the two full tossers cricket quiz? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. All right. We'll start with an, a, a nice, uh, a nice gentle half volley on middle and leg, uh, which you'll probably still drive through the covers. And I'd like to know, 1973, the very first Women's Cricket World Cup. Who were the winners? I'm going to say England. Is that your final answer? Yes. You sure? You don't want to think about it anymore? No. It's like 30 years before I was born, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you've got it spot on, one from one. It was oh, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, I think that was one of the first games of cricket you watched live, Alan. That's right. And it was only England playing. So it was England playing England, and they only <laughs> just managed to win, which was extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One from one, a very good start for our cricketing genius. Question number two. Who was, still is actually, because he's still around, but who was the Zimbabwean chicken farmer who famously took a one-day international hat-trick against England. Is this a real question? It is a real question. We only ask real questions, yeah. I've played, I've played I, against him. I know he's real. I have no idea. <laughs> da, 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 the chicken da, 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 farmer. Chicken farmer. His name, and you might have to go and Google this and read the story because it's a great story. His name is mm -hmm. Edo Brandes, and he opened the bowling for Zimbabwe, but he only played for Zimbabwe when he had time off from his chicken farm, uh, which he okay. tended to in between international cricket commitments. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one from two. That was a slightly trickier one, and it did go back well. How am I well. supposed to know that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a resident cricketing genius. I thought we'd know everything. <laughs> All right. Uh, question, question number three. Uh, and this one is a, it's a little bit tricky, but um, I'll, uh, I'll give it to you nonetheless. Uh, when Brian Lara broke the cricket record for a test score, going past Sir Gary Sobers and on to a total of 375. So the first time he broke it, who was the young left-handed batsman who was at the other end? Oh, good question. That is a good question. <laughs> oh, I have no idea. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll open it up because uh, it is a tricky one. Uh, he's broken the world record twice. Uh, when he broke it the second time, there was obviously somebody else. So uh, have a stab in the dark. And if you get either of the two, I'll give you the point. Um, Viv Richards. Viv Richards. <laughs> <laughs> Viv Richards. I think Viv Richards would have been in his early 70s when... <laughs> <laughs> no, he, had, he had retired. There were two of them. One, uh, one was Shivarin Chandapal, the left-hander. Yes. Okay. Uh, and the other was Ridley Jacobs, who was the wicketkeeper for West Indies for a period of time. And interestingly, here's a piece of completely random information where Edo Brandes was a chicken farmer. Ridley Jacobs was a lay minister. He was Pastor Ridley Jacobs when he wasn't keeping for the West Indies. Uh, so uh, there you go for your next game of cricketing 30 seconds. Okay, one from three. After a dazzling start, uh, you've now got put <laughs> down in the middle orders, uh, middle overs. So let's see if you can finish off nice and strong. I would like to know when Sri Lanka won the Men's Cricket World Cup, who was their captain? Uh, these questions are horrible. Um, <laughs> I'll give you a clue. He wasn't the most um, mobile cricketer the world has ever seen. Wasn't the most mobile. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> uh, no, I don't. These questions are all too old for me. I was like five when this happened. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I don't know. 
I've Dolshan is my guess, but he's not immobile. <laughs> <laughs> was it Dan? <laughs> he wasn't very well fed, uh, I don't think. Now, your correct answer there would have been Arjuna Ranatunga. Oh, okay. <laughs> would not have no guessed light bulb. that. No light bulb. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll give you one one last one, and this is a mix because you're berating us for giving you questions are too old. I should give you a question that speaks to both uh, Alan's generation and to your generation. I obviously sit in the middle, but slightly closer <laughs> to yours. Um, Alan Lamb, the uh, famous Weinberg <laughs> old boy, uh, <laughs> has got two Zimbabwean godsons who play cricket for England. Who are they? Oh, um, Tom and Sam, Corin. Tom and Sam Curran is correct. Yay. Comes back in the final over, knocks it up <laughs> two out of five. And that means Yay. you are as good as Scott Styrus and JP Dermany put together, which is a splendid effort. Congratulations. Splendid. splendid. Okay. Well done, you. All right. Now there's Thank a new. You. Normally at this point, I'd ask us 10 quick fire questions, but Dan doesn't even know this. I want to try something a little okay. new because. You know why? Because because it's the first. Okay. Uh, we're in July, and why not try something new? And so I want to play a little game of Would You Rather, and this is open to you and Dan. We can just have a little discussion because there's no right or wrong answer here. There's only a good discussion around it. So here's your question: Would you rather have Steve Smith in your in your side, but he can't bet, or Mornay Morkel in your side, but he can't bowl? Um, Steve Smith. Because he, he debuted yeah. as a leggy. So I read he could get some overs yeah. in. He'd get some overs in. Plus he'd be yeah. a good captain. He's going to be able yeah. to give you some batting advice, even from square leg. See, Dan's not sure. Dan he's wants more. No, no. <laughs> Steve Smith is Australian. Do you not realize this, Laura? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm t- I want to win. It's <laughs> wrong. You fool. <laughs> I don't know if I can continue this interview anymore. <laughs> But also, you might be right, because if you think about it, if you're struggling with, for example, um, woodwork or um, a thing, he's going to be, be able to give you sandpaper, isn't he? Uh, and <laughs> good exactly. kind of access to sandpaper. So, again, think wider. Think bigger picture, Dan. This is your problem. All right, no, not but bad. But let's, yes, let's, no. let's say in this team, let's say Laura's just bowled an over and she's right. been hit. Onto the roof of the stadium, more name yeah. can reach up, ah. or bring it back down and throw it back yes. to get for another six. So, uh, right. yes, more name uh. does live in Australia now, so that's already, <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm um, that was a terrible. All right, here's a better one. Here's one for you, Laura. All right, here we go. You have you can either have would you rather have eight bad decisions go against you before you've made more than 10 runs in each of those eight innings, but then you score a double century in your ninth innings. Or, oh. or you score 38 runs for eight innings in a row, but you can never go past that score. That's a good question. Um, well, I'm telling you it's a good question. I just thought of it. I mean, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> well... But are, you so get, you are you going to get picked after the yeah. seventh or of yeah. three? Do you get to the double century? Do I think in I, South Africa you would. I think you would in South Africa. Because we – Andrew had picked for, I think, uh, ten years and then scored that one <laughs> double century in West Indies. So, and I love Andrew Hudson. I'm a huge <laughs> fan. <of him. laughs> but would you – it also depends where you're playing because if you're playing in a T20, 38 runs is – Pretty valuable, especially if it's off you know, seven mm. balls. Uh, whereas uh, thirty-eight so, in a test match, not so much. You know, to be fair, though, if you said, if I said to you, you've got a test average of thirty-eight, you'd take that for your first eight games. Mm. I don't yeah. think you're averaging much with the eight ducks. That's the problem. Or is the two hundred not out? Is it not out because that would push your average mm. up? You see, we've got to think. These are things we've got to consider. All right, last one. These are things you sleep on, by the way. You don't have well, to. One, 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 one last okay. point, though. There could be eight decisions where you have uh, Stuart broadened it to third slip and you don't walk <laughs> and the umpire doesn't give you because that's a bad decision, but you're still in. But you're True. still in. It depends on who the <laughs> umpire We wish for Steve Bucknell to be umpiring all your games. You would never get any bad decisions going your way. 
<laughs> All right, here's the final question for you to think on. And this is tough. And I'm sorry to have to give you this choice, but that happens sometimes. You can. Would you rather never play the cover drive again in a batting innings or never play the forward defensive again in a batting innings? Ooh. Ooh. Um, probably just never Ooh. defend. <laughs> Really? Can't even so cover you, would, drive. <laughs> you would cover drive off a, a good length on your stumps. I mean, I mean, I've seen that. Roy Pinnar used to do that. Daryl Cullinan used to do that. So I think Lee that's Bar probably... Lee Barnard used to do that. Well, now, obviously. But Leah Barnard could do anything and everything. Um, <laughs> so, so you'd never play the forward defensive again. I mean, that would certainly... And it's good for T20, isn't it? Yeah. And we don't play test cricket yet in women's cricket. So... You, you don't play? We don't play any test cricket. So Right. I'd, I'd keep the cover drive. Keep the cover drive. This is I, I, I would take away every other shot of yours. I don't know why you bought this play. <laughs> I've seen you cover drive a bouncer down leg side. I don't know how you did it. <laughs> but I've seen it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, genius. Uh, well done. Those were the provokers for you. And I think you came out tops. A night of <laughs> philosophical debate and discussion on two full tosses. Uh, before we let you get back to your sunbed at the uh, seven-star Dubrovnik Palace Hotel, uh, what's the next little stretch? How much longer in Croatia? And then when do you touch down at Leeds International Airport, which I think is still called Lucas Radeby International Airport, uh, but uh, wherever it may be, uh, what happens the next little stretch? Uh, we're here in Croatia until the 15th. And then we head over to England. Um, and then the 100 goes on until, I think, 25 August. Uh, yeah, the first game is end of July. So, Very good. All right. Well, we will be watching. And I have to say, this is only down to you that Alan yeah. Committee will be watching uh, because yeah. Alan went out of his way to not watch every single game in the IPL. In fact, sometimes he didn't watch a particular game three or four times, such was his desire not to watch them. So the fact that he is watching the 100 is a, uh, a tick in your particular box, uh, and I'll be doing the same. Enjoy it. Have fun. Uh, and the only Thank thing you. we haven't had a chance to speak about, but we'll maybe have to have you back on the show during the course of the 100 um, and see how that musical collaboration with AB de Villiers is going. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Laurel, yeah. thank you so much for being part of this show. Uh, that, that's probably, I have to, now she's gone because this is language I, I shouldn't use in front of a big celebrity. But that's a daft question. How can you tell Laura Volvo to take away her cover drive, Alan Committee? It is her reason for being. Yes, but that was the conundrum. You know, sometimes you want to put a person in a, in a, in a very tight spot and to let them reveal their true character, which I thought she did marvelously. You, on the other hand, just came up with all kinds of silly answers. You didn't wear a tie. You came in late. And quite honestly, I thought you were an embarrassment in front of a very classy guest uh, this evening. And I, I'm sorry to bring this up. I should do this off air. But I think it's yeah. important. That you know, but I'm sorry. But I came up with three delightful questions there, which just off the top of my head, I think. And uh, and and then you went off on this whole uh, 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 Mornay Morkel reaching the top, which is heightest, by the way. Anyway, it's I, fine. I, I, I think the celebrity of now being uh, indirectly connected via a Facebook friend request sent to Lee Barnard is going to your head. Um, and we're going to address this before next week. I mean, next, next week, next week, actually, no, I mean, we were excited about Laura Volvard, and this is fantastic. But next week, uh, we have, I mean, we've lost count of the emails, the text messages, the WhatsApps, uh, the faxes, the small and slightly dazed pigeons flying into patio windows that have arrived at both of our respective homes uh, with the plea from the cricketing public, when are you joining the board of Cricket South Africa, Dan and Alan? Well, it might start next week because who is our guest next week? Mr. Lawson Naidu. And he <laughs> is the head of the head of the leaders of the boss of the people that we are going to be part of, I hope. I, I'm assuming that's what next week's about. He's officially a vice president. I think it's an interview of sorts, just what not the one he thinks it is. <laughs> no. <laughs> the uh, the grand vizier of South African cricket, our chairman of the board. He's also though, and it's the main issue we'll be addressing. He is the captain of the Spin Doctors cricket team, of which I am a very proud member. Have you played a game or two for Spin Doctors? I played one or two games for them. I was very happy to do so. Very privileged and very honoured, and it was a delight. I didn't turn up for one of them, but the other one, I really enjoyed. I think I'm not sure. 
Well, there we go. Lawson Naidu, uh, I haven't ever seen him score a run or take a wicket or hold a catch, but I've only played 70 or 80 games with him, uh, so it's not too much to go on. <laughs> he is the chairman of the board of Cricket South Africa, and he is our special guest next week. And what a run it is because he comes straight after the great Laura Volvart, who by now is back beside the heated pool in downtown Dubrovnik. Thank you to Laura for joining us. Thank you very much, Mr. Alan Kimiti. Stay safe and stay Thank healthy. You. And we shall see you again next week when I promise to be wearing a tie and blazer and looking my very best. That's all I ask. Nothing else, just a tie and a blazer. Good night. <laughs> From Alan Kimiti and myself, Dan Nichol, this is Two Full Tussers. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.